Hello and welcome to For the Clarity and Closure of the Viewers' Comments. I'm just going to say a few brief things before we begin. Number one, when you choose to comment on my YouTube channel, there are terms and conditions, there are rules that you must follow. It's my house. I expect you to follow the rules. If you don't, your comment probably will not be published. Also, I ask that you be honorable and graceful, i.e. respectful of everyone here. Please don't go around telling people what they should or shouldn't do. And if you come here making claims, making claims about this or that or the third or something that's happened to you or whatever, having to do with grammar or courts or whatever, you better be able to certify your correct sentence structure knowledge because this is a correct sentence structure channel and I am going to call you to the carpet on it if you start making claims about something that you perhaps don't know what you're talking about. It's very important for the safety of the vessel. If you have closure on correct sentence structure, you should be able to provide that proof like that on the spot. So keep that in mind. The energy you bring here, I will return. I will balance it out with rule one, rule equal. So without further ado, let's get to the comments. Welcome to another edition of For the Clarity and Closure, the viewers' comments. Our first comment comes from member Snook Loop 99 Thank you for your membership. And they say, why do you have your surname class in brackets in the description? Well, Snook Loop 99 whomever you are, if you, first of all, get closure on correct sentence structure, even get a rudimentary closure on it, you would be able to answer this question. So I could direct you to the over now 700 videos on this channel to begin your studying journey. Or I could just answer your question, even though it's easily available to you with a simple search of this channel, because any grammar question that you have can be answered by simply you putting the legwork in yourself. So the reason, in a description of the video, I have colon, space, glass in brackets, is because YouTube does not offer the bottom line, the underline, as a formatting function on their platform. Therefore, I cannot underline facts. I cannot underline my name. And again, as I said, if you have rudimentary closure in the grammar, then you know in a correct sentence structure, every correct sentence structure must end in an authority when you end it. So when I'm writing a sentence, if it says for the facts, of the facts, are with the facts, of the facts, with the facts, by the Jason hyphen Matthew, if I can't underline Jason hyphen Matthew colon glass, then that colon affects the positional sequencing. So then it would be by the Jason hyphen Matthew of the glass, period. Which would mean the sentence is ending on a concern rather than an authority. If you can't underline it. If you underline it, then that means Jason hyphen Matthew colon glass must be taken as a whole. It would be syntaxed as a seven, according to the rules. But because YouTube does not offer the underline as an option, a formatting option, in their description, I can't underline, so therefore, I have to put the bracket and glass. I have to put bracket and colon and glass in brackets because if I didn't, then it would void the mathematical interface of the correct sentence structure. So when you're reading it, it would say, for the facts, of the facts, are with the facts, of the facts, with the facts, by the Jason hyphen Matthew bracket colon space glass bracket period and now it's correct that's why thanks for the comment next comment comes from Cordell Ballinger 6244 and they said where did you get or make your syntax key and my closure to that is my memory serves me with correctness. I received it from Colin David Ivan Wink Colin Miller in late 2017. 
and then I took what he gave me and I corrected it over the years I kept adding corrections and corrections to it because there were tons of errors all over it so I corrected it and that's the syntax key that I use now and the syntax key that uh, is part of the curriculum that I give to my students uh, so if you want to apply for a workshop and I accept you then you would get a copy of that thanks for the comment and this right here is uh, from a series of comments from Dylan's voice now I knew I knew there would at least be one individual out there who might feel some sort of way about the things that I said regarding the nine and a half hour David Wynn Miller video and some of the specific claims that he made about judges and about dates and about situations that happened that he claimed to be involved in and caused to happen. I knew that there would be people out there that would not like that and would immediately try to come to his defense and talk of, you know, say positive things to try and, I don't know, whatever, balance it out. The thing is, and I've said this before, and I said this to this individual, um, hero worship and protagonist-centered morality don't float here. As David Wayne Miller himself said, one zero voids the multiplication problem. One mistake. So, if, say, in the part of the video that I reacted to, that I audited, say I picked three claims that he made, and all three claims I could not certify, could not prove. What does that mean? Does that mean all his claims are false? No. <laughs> what it means is, you just have to use critical thinking. Hero worshipping is never a good idea. Thinking someone can do no wrong is definitely not a safe place to be in if you're going to be a follower or an acolyte. Which again, I don't participate with that either. But I know that there are people that do and I know that there are people who for whatever reason have some sort of emotional attachment to what they think David Wynn Miller represented and then like uh, Dylan's voice here which I don't know if he does or he doesn't but I do know he invested a lot of energy in writing multiple comments saying positive things about David Wynn Miller and trying to uh, perhaps excuse certain things so let's check out this comment he says something else you can also verify are flags at the United Nations building they're all modified by what's on top of them. I'm not sure if that was even part of the video, the section of the video that I looked at. I, I don't know that he talked about flags or flag protocol. But it is pretty easy to learn about flag protocol if you look up Army Regs 840-10. Um, I'm talking about more things that aren't obvious like that's a pretty obvious thing I'm talking about more uh, sublime things like what he was claiming about the judges you would be able to find evidence in the fiction that a judge had been disbarred now as to whether a flag has a ball on top of it I can walk out the door and look up and down the street and see that I mean that's not a big deal I'm talking about the claims that when someone makes them I don't know how they can like like those claims that he made about the judges that I, I don't know that why would he make those claims if maybe back then in uh, 2004 I don't know when the video was I, I forget but maybe you know the internet isn't that detailed as it is now and maybe he knew that no one could really verify what he was saying Things in the ball for military use, but I think David said it's for military recruitment. The ball on top of the flag means the place is open for contract or open for draft or open for business. That's what it means. The ball on top of the flag means open for contract. Um, 
Not everything David said is necessarily 100% accurate as heard by our ears. The man was an astounding speaker, and I would say he is like a treasure for us, and he was giving a lot of valuable information. So thanks, David. Uh, pulley system got to do with the ball. I mean, yeah, obviously. And I definitely wouldn't be doing what I'm doing if it wasn't for David. But the point I'm making is you have to be careful if you're going to use this stuff to not fall into the predicament of taking someone at the word and just believing what they say because they're a national treasure, because uh, they're an astounding speaker. Yes, I too was blown away by David when I first heard him. I too was, you know, sitting stunned when I was talking to him on the phone. And listening to him rattle off this or that or the third as I was asking him questions. That's called charisma. When you really, you know, go below that or around it and look at it from another angle. And you really put together all the things the guy was saying. All the questions that he was being asked. And he wasn't afraid to answer whether he knew the answer or not. He would still talk. You can, I can guarantee you that. And you figure out the things that can be certified and can't be certified. With my humble experience of thousands upon thousands upon thousands upon thousands of hours of study of this stuff. The majority of things that David claimed cannot be proven. Flat out. Cannot be certified, cannot be proven by normal means available to the everyday common rule one rule equal man or woman it's just not there if that information is available somewhere else that secret has nothing to do with us and it's a violation of rule one rule equal anyway to gain a little insight as to perhaps what could possibly be David's true mind Go in his book or go on his original website, not the website that Mark Lord, Case Kakish, and Christopher uh, hijacked, but I'm talking about go back me on the Wayback Machine and look at David's original website. And in his dictionary, look up the word surf, and you might get a little insight into what the man really thought. Maybe. And here's some more. Uh, Dylan's voice, he says, for the love of the universal brotherhood. Not sure what that means. Uh, yes, as you say, Jason, you be the judge. Indeed, I should comprehend what I author. And also, David told us to take the system and improve it and make it better if we can. He was all for that. The sentence structure system, that is. Anyway, cheers. David's lectures are always fun to watch. I definitely agree. And... I don't know if you know this Dylan's voice. Uh, I give closure to this in the video that I shared a while back about my journey, the beginning of my correct sentence structure journey. I was actually working with David to correct the errors on his website before, you know, a year before he passed away. So I was working on that and sending the corrections to him. I don't know if you know that. Yes, I couldn't find verification of ITE either, but that was only with a brief internet search. David may or may not be privy to information we haven't found yet. So for us, that's unverified. Well, then it doesn't matter, Dylan's voice, because that would violate rule one, rule equal. The information has to be available to everyone. If it's buried in an underground bunker somewhere, it has no bearing on us anyways and doesn't matter. It doesn't pertain to us. And besides... In the example we're talking about in the video, maybe you misheard. I'm not talking about I-T-E. I'm talking about I-T. Because that's what David said. David was using it in the word united. He said, U-N means no, I-T means citizen. And then, of course, E-D is a suffix in his past tense. I could find no evidence that I-T means citizen. That's all I was saying. Nothing to do with I-T-E. Man and 
Man Natanz says, hello, does Ricardo teaches quantum grammar in Spanish? It would be nice to spread this knowledge in more languages. Yes, of course, uh, it would be wonderful if that were the case. Uh, I shared with you in a kuleana to this comment that um, I don't know anyone who teaches this in Spanish. No one. In my six years of doing this, I've never met anyone who can use it in Spanish. What you can do is learn it in plain English, and then you translate it into Spanish, and then you will be a pioneer, and your name will be legendary in the annals of quantum grammar. Thanks for the comment. And another one from Dylan's voice regarding David Wynn Miller. Yeah, I mean, some things he says are absolutely verifiable, like string theory, for instance. It's a globally accepted existing theory in textbooks that cannot be disputed. It may only be a theory, but in the textbooks, so we can verify that one. You know what else is in the textbooks? Dylan's voice. <laughs> the moon landings in the textbooks. Thanksgiving's in the textbooks. Where, you know, the one, the Thanksgiving, when the uh, settlers came over to the North America and they sat down and had a cool dinner with the with the natives that were there and everybody got along and it was peaceful and uh, which led to you know mass amounts of genocide and uh, smallpox blankets and and uh, you know torturing uh, Native American children if they spoke their own native tongue and things like that you know but it, I mean in the textbooks it says that it was a very you know cordial and jovial thing sort of like a you know a helping symbiotic thing when that's pretty far from what it was according to the textbooks just thought I'd point that out the, even if it's in the textbook it doesn't mean that it's verifiable because the winners write history you have to be very careful with that you have to go to many many different sources not just one if we list all the things that we cannot that cannot be disputed, then it will probably be quite a large list. And obviously, a lot not verifiable. Just like we can't verify a lot of things that are said by prominent people, such as prime minister and presidents. Well, here's the thing: as I just said, Dylan's voice. It's my experience in thousands upon thousands upon thousands of hours of study in these past six years that the bulk of the claims that David Wynn Miller made cannot be you know concretely verified or certified just can't be the majority of them, the bulk of them cannot be there may be a small part the obvious ones that can be but the bulk of what he says cannot be verified by my experience I don't know how much you've studied this I don't know I know that you don't know the grammar I know you don't have closure on that and I know you've been here on this channel for at least a couple of years so I'm not sure what you're interested in. If, I mean, if you're not here to learn the grammar and you're just here to, you know, share thoughts like this, that's cool too. Um, but if you were to actually commit to learning the grammar, I think that that would definitely improve the lens. You know, maybe clear up the lens that you're looking at this man through at the moment. If you really get closure on the grammar, I think that would definitely help a lot but this is just more of uh, Dylan basically defending David perhaps I don't know maybe he feels the, the need for that but appreciate that Allison Francis says his family have been threatened but he can still be found on other channels oh they're talking about Romilly Stewart um, that's the guy that uh, I did a little video on and I offered to teach him Correct sentence structure, communication, parsing, syntax, grammar. Um, I gave him my contact information. I said, contact me at uh, jsmatchg17 at gmail.com. And uh, we'll set up a consultation. I'll, I can explain this. I'm very confident in my ability to explain this stuff to you. And he just, he replied on different platforms, basically dismissing correct sentence structure and kind of being derisive about it. Which is typical of people who, you know, they see something that's unknown. 
I don't want to say he's like afraid of it, but um, maybe he doesn't have the confidence in his grammar that he, that he thinks he has. Or actually this thought just popped into my head. Maybe he doesn't want to learn it because he actually does know what it is. And for whatever reason, doesn't want to be a part of it. It's hard to say. Or it could just be ego. Next comment comes from member April, and they say, For myself, I did do a quick search to see if I could find out what school Dave was teaching in. However, I came up with nothing. I would rather study more about grammar than be concerned about dates, times, if they're irrelevant to my learning. I'm just thankful he brought this to light, and I found this video, and then this channel with so much info. If anyone did happen to stumble across the name, of the school, though, I'd love to know what, where so we could look into it. Agreed. Definitely. I personally didn't try to look that up because I knew that the, the most readily available data would be in relation to those judges he mentioned because I knew that they would pop right up because they're all in the fiction uh, registry. As far as the school, I don't know how you could possibly, how you could possibly do that. That would take a lot of time and effort for sure. But it would be interesting if someone could find it. Get the LP says, of course you can worship a language. Why not? In the beginning was the word. <laughs> the word was God. Well, I suppose. I mean, he's. They're responding to a comment where I said, you know, people or entities are worshipped. You, you wouldn't worship like a pen or a lamp or a grammar, not a language, a grammar. But I mean, I suppose you could, but I'm talking about, well, see, now I'm talking myself into a into a ditch here because I said I'm talking I was gonna say I'm talking about logical people but then what logical person <laughs> would worship something they can't certify it would stand to reason that they're not logical for doing that so then how can you criticize someone for worshiping a grammar or a language so got me there <laughs> you can worship a turd too right and we have yet another David Wim Miller comment from Dylan's voice. So I can definitely see that Dylan is emotionally invested in uh, what he thinks David Wim Miller was or whatever he represents for him. It's pretty obvious from the sheer number and length of the comments that he's left on this one video. So he just goes into what he did some research about Destroyer of Worlds. And he says, I take that to mean, which means that's his opinion. He's just sharing his opinion and his interpretation of what David said. This is an actual certification of anything David said. Um... Let's see what else here. I used the word faint in my comment. A false show, assumed appearance, pretended blow move. Yes, it's a it's a very cool move in martial arts and specifically boxing. You get someone to respond. You get someone to respond to a faint. Get them to flinch and they react and boom, then you can pop them. So how did you use it? Let me see how he uses this here. Notice others destroy the ability of others have to trick you with words, because even my family just public sentences I can see. No actual provable absolute claim, so it destroys false authority. Faint authority. Now see, to me, logically, that doesn't make any sense. Um... Authority is authority. Authority comes from knowledge. It also comes from consent. If you consent to someone or something to have authority over you, then it does. If you don't, it doesn't. 
that's how it works. All the way back to Pharaoh, henceforth the Masons. So he's perhaps saying that the lineage of the Masons goes back to Pharaohic times. He also says we're living in a pre-written play, which is also an interesting idea. Yes, these are all very interesting ideas and opinions, none of which can be certified or proven. Ten Rib Music says, with the jurisdiction over words, part for me. If I can't write my full name of who I am at the end, <clears throat> I'm saying I'm sure of something I write. I have a fear of something and I'm unable to certify what I write. Mean is the real me, the man, the fact. I noticed that on a local public official formation website, it's more of the quantum gobbledygook stuff from Russell J. Gould lingering here, I think, that close to 99% of usury makers make claims of the fiction name nickname. When a public formation website wants a nickname, I ask, why does it want a nickname? The power of a real name with the words and volition on that post have measurement learning by the results. Well, Tin Rib Music, since you seem to be writing in brackets, but you're still using brackets within those brackets, and I don't get the volition behind that. Because if it's already in brackets and you're just speaking plainly, why would you try to mix quantum gobbledygook in there? inside your brackets. Number one. Number two, real name, literally, R-E-A-L is two syllables. R-E means no, A-L means contract. It's no contract. So the power of a no contract name is about zero, is what I'll say about that. Um, I do appreciate that you put your name at the bottom for the simple fact that your YouTube name does not reflect your correct name. And I like to know, like I don't know who Tin Rib Music is, but I know who you are because we've spoken. So that's why I'm grateful that you put your name and take authority over your words uh, outside of all this stuff that you're mentioning here. Here Jason may knock me on what I write. Too long off topic, point out what needs to <laughs> well, the only thing, I, I don't knock anybody, and it's interesting that you have that perception there, that I'm knocking people, because usually the only time that I will basically chastise people or reprimand people is when they violate the terms and conditions of the channel, which are readily available to anyone. So if someone's writing something that's off topic to the video that, especially if it's a grammar video, yeah, I'm, go I'm probably going to boot them off the channel. Or I mean their comment off the channel. Because why would you come on here and knowingly violate my terms and conditions? Like if you're saying right now, if you're saying um, Jason may knock me on what I write too long off topic, off topic is definitely a rule. So by you saying that, you're saying that you know you're breaking the rules of this channel. You know that you're violating the terms and conditions. But, you see what I'm saying? This is a concept that many people, I feel, find challenge with. Because so many people are just so used to saying whatever they want, whenever they want, with no regard to who they're talking to or the domain that they're in. Or the rules or terms and conditions of that domain. And uh, hopefully I'm spreading awareness on that so that people do begin to have consideration and don't just start blah, blah, blah and about whatever they feel like. Uh, Jonathan Simon. Yes, thank you for your comment, Jonathan. <laughs> and then, of course, right on, right on time. And the terms and conditions that I posted, I actually posted a video of the terms and conditions. This guy decides to write a conspiracy theory just to, you know, I will bet you any money that they're from North America. Jai Vance Sant says, 
Whatever happened to plenipotentiary judge David Wynn Miller, aka David Wynn Miller, founder of Quantum Grammar? And then they said, your channel has an uploaded video about the syntax knowledge of David Wynn Miller, dated September 12, 2022, with two replies by you to comments. You have an opportunity to correct the record if that's your intention. Peace. And then they said my reply to your reply was immediately deleted. My reply pointed out your inconsistency inconsistency and self-contradiction. Peace. So the first comment. What happened to Planet Potentiary Judge David Wynn Miller, a founder of Quantum Grammar? If this individual is asking that, then they're in the wrong place. If they don't have access to Google, if they've been living in a cave, I don't know. But it blows my mind. So, I'm thinking the individual is here to stir the pot, most likely. In some way, shape, or form. And then they go on to say about a video about the syntax knowledge of David Wood Miller, dated September 12, 2022. That is incorrect. I actually went back and researched it. And uh, that is not the correct date. That video was not published on that date. And I have no idea what they're talking about correct the record. What no chord are they talking about? R-E means no. C-O-R-D. I have no idea what this individual is talking about. And then they accuse me of deleting their comment. <laughs> Which I said, basically, I don't know who the hell you are. Much less delete a comment from you. I have no idea what you're talking about. And then they respond back, you are correct. I was mistaken when I could not find my reply to your reply. Please accept my apology. I do not speak your rare, narrow, technical, specialized language with which you frame your presentations and replies, so meaningful communication is not possible, especially when you demand the comments step up onto the geometric level playing field of communication, whatever that means. Peace. Well, how do you know something's narrow if you have no knowledge of it? What I will say about that comment is that uh, I don't communicate with that individual with correct sentence structure. I communicate with plain, simple English. It's up to them whether they want to find meaning in it or not. If they think communication is meaningless, then it's meaningless. That's their choice to look at it through that lens. And basically what I mean by step up under the geometric level playing field of communication, I mean... I can schedule you a 10 to 15 minute video consultation where you and I are looking at each other and we're both talking, basically face to face. That is what is known as a geometric level playing field or an example of it. You can say whatever you want to say, I can say whatever I want to say. And it's not a typing back and forth type of thing, it's an actual communication. So it's a fair level field rather than unlevel field. Because who has the higher ground has the advantage. It's a level field. It's just common sense. Just, just logic. Sounds like a cult. Please give my regards to David Wynn Miller. Thanks. I found that a little bit cryptic. Being that David Wynn Miller passed away the summer solstice of 2018. Um, the grammar itself is a pure technology. Now, David Wynn Miller, you know, there may, he might have a cult following out there. You know, people that immediately defend him. If anyone criticizes him, they immediately come to his defense and try to make whatever excuses for him, rationalizations, this, that, or the third. That, that's kind of cult-like behavior. I do agree. But the grammar itself is not cult-hidden secret or worshipful it's just a technology like mathematics is there any information on why we need to do this can't find anyone explaining it in an easy and understandable way rs sweden there is no reason why you need to do this that i can tell you only you can say what you need or don't need why would you want someone else to tell you what you need to do or don't need to do? 
And if you don't find that video that you're commenting on about the mini class of the live life claim, if you don't find that easily, easy and understandable, then I don't, I really, I really don't know what to say to that one. I'm pretty confident I can explain things to someone if I have them like in a video meeting or something like that. And I do make very simple, simplistic videos and explain things, distill it down to their, you know, basically the bare bones of it. So again, if you don't think this is this video that you're commenting on is easy and understandable, then perhaps you need to work on your pre-foundation to learning this stuff. Like learning plain simple English, the basic rudiments of that. And then start studying this, um, if that's the case. This is an announcement I made where I said I'm trying out Rumble, and I asked people to come over and follow. And the no choice man says we follow you to the end. I appreciate the sen sentiments behind that. Uh, it is not my volition to have followers per se, as in people following behind me. But in the context of social media where you click on the follow button or the subscribe button, I definitely appreciate that. But you're in no way behind me or anything like that. We're all on the geometric level playing field, my friend. And the final comment comes from Magic Fluid Process. And I ask the question, is the word family tangible contract fact-based or non-tangible contract non-fact-based? And they said, I don't know the answer. Conventionally speaking, it is an abstract noun. Well, magic fluid process. Do you know the mechanics of credentialing, the tangibility or non-tangibility of a word? Because if you knew that, then you would know the answer to this. And to put it in a short, bite-sized uh, condition of state for you, the way you credential tangibility or non-tangibility of a word is to parse the word. Take apart the particles, look up those particles. If those particles are tangible, then you would syntax the word as tangible. If they're non-tangible, then you would syntax it as non-tangible. Easy as pie. I'd like to thank everyone for watching. I do appreciate it. I do enjoy doing these comments videos. It gives me, so I sort of feel like I'm communicating with the viewer. Again, don't take it personal at all because I don't really know any of you personally. Some of you I do, but most of you I don't. So there's no reason to take it personal. Keep coming back. Study the over 700 videos on this channel if you want to or if you'd like to learn correct sentence structure communication parse syntax grammar contact me at the email address listed at the bottom of your screen i will set up a 10 to 15 minute video consultation between you and me you can ask me whatever you like and i'll do the same and we'll see if this is something that uh, you're prepared to commit to if you'd like to support the channel click on the join button underneath this video there are two tiers of membership uh, the second tier has access to exclusive content not available to the public once again thank you for watching uh, hit the subscribe button hit the like button turn the notification bell to all so that you don't miss any of my premieres because i do post on a very consistent basis there are over 500 correct sentence structure videos for here you to study on this channel my gift to you my fellow mankind thank you again and i'll see you in the next one